Enterobrigative Escherichia coli. Enterobrigative Escherichia coli EEC or EEC are a pathotype of Escherichia coli which cause acute and chronic diarrhea in both the developed and developing world. They may also cause urinary tract infections. EEC are defined by their stacked brick pattern of adhesion to the human laryngeal epithelial cell line H. epminus 2. The pathogenesis of EEC involves the aggregation of and adherence of the bacteria to the intestinal mucosa, where they elaborate enterotoxins and cytotoxins that damage host cells and induce inflammation that results in diarrhea. EEC is now recognized as an emerging enteric pathogen. In particular, EEC are reported as the second most common cause of traveler's diarrhea, second only to enterotoxigenic E. coli, and a common cause of diarrhea amongst pediatric populations. It has also been associated with chronic infections in the latter, as well as in immunocompromised hosts, such as HIV-infected individuals. Awareness of EEC was increased by a serious outbreak in Germany during 2011, causing over 5,000 cases and at least 50 fatalities. The pathogen responsible was found to be an EEC 104 H4 strain which was lysogenized by a Shiga toxin encoding phage typically associated with Shiga toxin producing Escherichia coli, which often encode the adhesin intamin. The putative cause of the outbreak were sprouted fenugreek seeds. Strains of EEC are highly genetically heterogeneous, and the identification of virulence factors important for pathogenesis has proven difficult. Many EEC encode a transcriptional factor named AGAR aggregative regulator, part of the RSC family of transcription activators. AGAR regulates many plasmid, as well chromosomally encoded, virulence factors that include genes implicated in aggregative adherence fimbri biogenesis and toxin production. Several toxins have been linked to EEC virulence, including SH etone shigella enterotoxin 1, PET plasmid encoded toxin, and EAST-1. However, further studies of these factors have failed to elucidate their role in pathogenesis. Classification Diarrhea is still an important disease burden worldwide. It causes considerable childhood mortality in the developing world and is correlated with morbidity or of relating to disease and substation health care costs in industrialized countries. The cause of infectious diarrhea is diarrheogenic Escherichia coli DC group. Subgroups of diarrheogenic Escherichia coli DC are the following enteroinvasive E. coli IEC, enteropathogenic E. coli EPEC, enterotoxigenic E. coli EPEC. Shiga toxin producing E. coli stec and enterobrigative E. coli EEC. E. coli is a bacterium that is found in the intestines. It's mostly harmless, but some strains of bacteria can cause illness and infection. Symptoms and causes Enterobrigative Eschichia coli EEC is a type of strain from E. coli. E. coli causes intestinal infections. Some intestinal infections include diarrhea fever and abdominal pain. Most severe cases can lead to bloody diarrhea, dehydration, or even kidney failure. People with weakened immune systems, young children, older adults, and pregnant women are at increased risks for developing these complications. Symptoms of intestinal infection usually begin between 8 and 52 hours after you have been infected with E. coli. This is the incubation period. The incubation period is the time between catching an infection and symptoms appearing. Symptoms Abdominal cramping, pain or tenderness, watery or mucoidy diarrhea, nausea and vomiting. In some people bloody diarrhea has only been observed in children, and only rarely. On the other hand, the Stechiac hybrid strain identified in the 2011 Germany outbreak caused bloody diarrhea. The bacteria that causes the infection can enter your body in numerous ways, s ways. Contaminated water human and animal feces may pollute ground and surface water, including streams, lakes, rivers, and water used to water or irrigate crops. Although public water systems use chlorine and other chemicals to kill such organisms like E. coli, some outbreaks have been linked to contaminated water supplies.
Contaminated food most common way to get an E. coli infection is by eating contaminated food such as ground beef, unpasteurized milk, and fresh produce. Improper food handling by consuming raw food or not cooking the food properly, especially meats and poultry. It can also be transmitted by not cleaning your cooking utensils properly, causing cross-contamination. Person-to-person E. coli can be easily transmitted from person to person, especially when infected children and adults don't wash their hands properly. Diagnosis Diagnosis of infectious diarrhea and identification of antimicrobial resistance is performed using a stool culture with subsequent antibiotic sensitivity testing. It requires a minimum of two days and maximum of several weeks to culture gastrointestinal pathogens. The sensitivity true positive and specificity true negative rates for stool culture vary by pathogen, although a number of human pathogens cannot be cultured. For culture positive samples, antimicrobial resistance testing takes an additional 12-24 hours to perform. Current point-of-care molecular diagnostic tests can identify EEC and antimicrobial resistance in the identified strains much faster than culture and sensitivity testing. Microarray-based platforms can identify EEC and AMR genes in two hours or less with high sensitivity and specificity, but the size of the test panel, i.e. total pathogens and AMR genes, is limited. Newer metagenomics-based infectious disease diagnostic platforms are currently being developed to overcome the various limitations of culture and all currently available molecular diagnostic technologies. Treatment Antibiotics is a type of medicine that is used to destroy or inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Studies have suggested that fluoroquine alone, especially ciprofloxacin, may be the most effective antibiotic when treating enterobrigative E. coli EEC infections. Patients treated with ciprofloxacin had significant reductions in duration of diarrhea. Unfortunately, resistance towards ciprofloxacin in enterobrigative E. coli EEC strains has been reported in several studies. For most people, treatments include rest and the intake of fluids. For patients with profuse diarrhea or vomit should be rehydrated by drinking much water or by drinking rehydration solutions, such as rehydrolyte or pedialyte. Pathogenesis EEC is transmitted through the fecal-oral route and primarily contaminated by food and water. EEC has been associated with many symptoms such as diarrhea in some individuals and intestinal colonization in others. Because many strains of EEC have been identified, it is difficult to identify the mechanism of its pathogenesis. Most candidate virulence genes are not always connected with disease. The model of EEC pathogenesis comprises three stages. Stage 1 is the attachment of the intestinal mucosa by aggregative adherence fimbri AAF and other adhering projections. Stage 2 an increase in mucus that covers EEC on its surface of enterocytes is found, stage 3 evocation of an inflammatory response, mucosal toxicity. Stage 1, aggregative adherence factors AAF are responsible for the adhesion to the intestinal mucosa. AAF are made up of three fimbri encoded by the PAA plasmid, agafa igminis 3. Ag is in charge of aggregative phenotype and human erythrocyte hemagglutination of EEC. Alpha allows EEC to adhere to the intestinal mucosa. Tinal mucosa. Adminus 3 serves as an adhesion. MAT3 membrane associated proteins are essential in the EEC adherence to hemagglutination of animal cells. Stage 2. After AAF factors in stage 1, adherence to the mucosa is characterized by the presence of biofilm. The production of biofilm is regulated by AGR and demands several genes. A loss of biofilm production and diffuse adherence pattern was reported in EEC at a pH of 4.0. Many studies reveal that EEC are capable of surviving in the mucus layer. This evidence can support why malnourished children who are infected with EEC and live in poor conditions develop mucoid stools and prolonged diarrhea. Stage 3. Cytotoxic effects are found in the release of toxins in EEC as well as an elicitation of the inflammatory response, mucosal toxicity, and intestinal secretion. 
EEC toxins are destructive to the intestinal villi and enterocytes. There are three toxins found in EEC, plasmid-encoded toxin PET, heat-stable toxin EASTONE, and Shigella enterotoxin 1 SHE tone. History E. coli has been involved as agents of diarrheal disease since 1920. Enterobrigative Eschychia coli EEC was first found in 1987 in a child in Lima, Peru. Since 1987, Enterobrigative Eschychia coli EEC has been recognized as agents of diarrhea in industrialized and developing countries. Enterobrigative Eschychia coli EEC is most commonly found in developing countries due to less developed industrial base and low human development HDI compared to other countries. India, Jamaica, and Mexico are the most commonly risked countries. Equals equals references equals equals equals.